Hello everyone, welcome to this video. I'm going to be playing a game for my club. A rapid game. Right, uh, I'll start with d4 I guess. I'll go c4 fighting for the center. Uh, e6. I guess I'll go knight c3. This is a very interesting system. Here there are many things I can play. One of the lines I think is interesting is knight f3, knight f6, queen a4 check. Disrupting uh, the coordination of the black pieces and forcing the ugly move knight c6. White is behind in development but is positionally better if black can't do anything. The other move I have is e3, followed by a3. I guess I'll go for knight f3. The idea of queen a4 after knight f6. Oh. There we go. Yeah, e3, bishop g5 is also possible, but uh, I don't uh, play it too much. Black has pretty easy equality after h6. I know how black could get the position which is at least equal. Bishop d2 is the main line here. Um, bishop uh, taking on c4 followed by bishop d6 is the main line here. Then there is a nice idea, queen c2, e5, pawn takes e5, knight takes e5, f4, bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3. The idea is that after uh, queen e7, white can calmly castle, queen takes f3, king h1, and white has a lot of compensation. This is very good according to Alexander Morozevich, uh, a Russian top player. I've had very many players play the ugly looking move bishop d7 because they think oh I'm such a genius threatening knight takes d4 because if queen takes b4 then the knight c2 check a fork on the king on e1 and on the queen on b4 but after queen c2 the bishop on d7 is misplaced uh, Daniel Dubov played the interesting move bishop takes c3 here bishop takes c3 and the knight e4 okay the main line, I guess. After a lot of thinking time, for sure. Yeah, and the absolute main line. I'll go queen c2, yes. Uh, there was a game where Magnus Carlsen played this as black and got destroyed. It was against... Uh, what's his name again? Dimitri Andrejkin. And this is the reason I'm inspired to try this line with white. Okay, let's let me just make sure that I don't miss, uh, mix anything up. Pawn takes e5, knight takes e5, takes six, f4, bishop d6, castles, long castles, followed by e4 at some point. Yeah, that's good for me. Bishop takes e4, bishop takes e3, rook e8, d4, c5, takes b6 here, knight g4, castles. Yeah. I guess some of like h3 or a3 would also be interesting. But I'll try this line. I'm pretty much taking on c3 with the bishop because this is the main line. He goes bishop d6, which is wrong due to long castles. Let's see if he tries knight g4. I have rook df1 at the very least, so it's good for me. Bishop d6 is a mistake. He should take on c3 instead. Though the only problem is I don't know what to, the exact moves to play here. I only know that you play for the e4, e5 idea, which is pretty venomous. 
Also, H3, G4 could be an idea at some point, I guess, but it's not the same as uh, pushing in the center with E4, E5. It's not nearly as strong. Though I have to be careful of some E4, Knight, G4, E5, Bishop, C5 ideas. I don't know how strong it is, but it could be something. Which is why I've seen the move H3 being played here. White's plan is pretty simple, h3, e4, e5. Uh, to push his pieces a little. Okay, this is kind of logical, but on the other hand I get h3 with a tempi at some point, so I don't really believe in this move. A bishop e2, but I don't really want to trade off this bishop, and maybe he even can take, take and play rook e8, and get control over the e4 square, so I'm going to play rook e1. With the idea of h3 and then e4. Maybe e4 right away too, to be honest. Looks good. Yeah, this should be very good for white. Because I don't see how black can stop white's ideas. I don't really believe that black has nearly enough counterplay on the queen side where black has uh, the pawn majority. One pawn more means that you're usually going to play on this side of the board, especially taking into account the castle queen side, but I don't really believe in moves like a6 with the idea of b5, because a6, e4, b5, bishop, d3, okay, what have you achieved? So I can consider playing h3 after a6 as well. <coughs> Sorry. Seems like a pretty simple position to play as white. Because I only have one idea here. I think the computer says that after bishop d6, the position is uh, plus 0 0.8 in white's favor. But I didn't check it much after long castles, to be honest. Okay, e4 is very tempting. I think his idea is to meet it with bishop c7 or something. Then I can play h3. Okay, e4, bishop takes f4, bishop takes f4. Yeah, he can take her. Okay. He might also want to play c4. I saw b5, but I don't know how good that is. Because I'll have bishop d3. We also have the move h3. And I'm not so when I think he'll have to play bishop e6. But maybe it's simpler to play e4. Because I also have the idea of f5 in some positions, trying to trap the bishop on g4. If b5, bishop d3, and if b4, I could consider even e5. Though, maybe it's simpler to just play knight a4 or something like this. I don't know if king b1, which is a typical move you make after you uh, castle on the queen side, if that's a move I want to make. Okay, now both f5 and e5 are very tempting moves to play. To be honest, I don't really see how his bishop is going to get out, so I'll actually go for f5. Uh, queen d4, bishop d3, I guess. Rook a d8, rook e3. I don't see the tactics that are supposed to save my opponent. After e5, uh, bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, knight d5. I wasn't so sure. Even though I am definitely better after a move like rook d1, but uh, 
thought this was even more convincing, but maybe I should have had a more careful look at the move queen d4. To make sure I don't plunder anything. Also, I have the move bishop b3 after queen d4 if I want to. Now the simple plan is h3 g4, trapping the bishop. But I need to find the response to queen d4. If I should retreat my bishop to d3 or b3. It's not that easy of a question, to be honest. Because on d3 it defends the e4 pawn, but is also a bit more exposed after rook a d8. But I don't think he's able to take the e pawn anyway, so maybe bishop b3 is the better move. I don't really believe in counterplay with a5 uh, after bishop b3, bishop b, uh, queen d4, bishop b3, a5, h3, a4, and knight takes a4. Maybe I have a better move. Oh, but maybe it's not that bad for black actually. Queen d4, bishop b3, a5. I can always play a3 if I want to give the bishop a flight square on a2. Yeah, I like the look of a3. If then a4, bishop a2, yeah, should be good for me. Bishop b3, rook f8, h3. Yeah, I don't see the problem with this move. Rook b d8, h3. Yeah, I don't see what's happening here. I don't know if bishop e3 is a move I want to make. Probably not. Yeah, I thought of this and I thought a3 would be a good response here. Let's calculate it. a4, bishop a2. Takes, takes. Yeah, it looks good. Bishop takes a3 obviously doesn't work in this position. If a4, then bishop a2, as I said. Uh, what other moves does he have? If he moves the bishop, I wanted to play h3. So let's say bishop d6, h3. And I don't see why his bishop wouldn't be getting trapped. He wanted to play bishop a2, is there anything wrong with this move? Knight takes e4, rook takes e4 is not a problem. Bishop takes f5, pawn takes f5. Bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, bishop c5, h3. Yeah, I don't see a problem with the move bishop a2. Now I simply want to play h3, g4 and I don't think he can stop it. Yes, h3 was my idea. Is there anything wrong with it? Queen f2 takes on g4 isn't good for him. b5 pawn takes pawn. Yeah, his attack isn't in time, of course. A g4, yeah, g4, I guess. Trapping his bishop. Yeah, let's take his bishop. I need to make an accurate move and I win the game, as far as I see. I have a lot of pieces on the king's side for sure. And the move rook h4 is tempting with the idea of doubling on the h file. And threatening the knight because if he goes knight f2, I have bishop e3, knight d3, king b1. Let's do it. 
The only thing is that now the Rook on H4 is undefended, but I don't see how we can use this. He goes here. Should I throw in the move bishop e3? I don't know if I should. I honestly don't see the... Is it necessary or not? Or should I just play the simple rook e h1? And then after h6 I was thinking of even taking on h6. Then I don't think he can stop the mate. So let's see, rook e h1, h6 takes, takes. Yeah, I don't see how he stops the mate. I don't think he has any counterplay which is in time with knight d3, knight takes b2 or something. In fact, after h6, pawn takes h6, so, sorry, h6, bishop takes h6, pawn takes h6, I have queen g2, and if knight g6, then queen takes g6, so it should be all over. Let's see, knight d3 check, king b1, yeah, I don't see how he gen narrates any counterplay after the moves knight d3 king b1 so it should be just good for me okay king b1 bishop takes c3 i have queen takes c3 if i want or i can take with a pawn maybe that's even smarter and he should be getting mated I have the move bishop e3, which looks pretty, but I gotta make sure that I don't mess up anything after bishop e3. Okay, he has zero checks, that's a good start. I'm threatening mate, and I'm threatening the queen of queen takes f3, rook h8 mate, so yeah, bishop e3 wins. Uh, nice. And the next game begins. Let's see what my opponent will play now. Should I go for the Karakan again or should I go for something else like e5? I'll play the Karo. Feel as if I know the Karakan very well, but uh, you obviously need to learn some more openings, so that's why I've begun studying e5. But uh, then I want to expand even more. So that it would be very difficult to prepare against me, because currently it's not so difficult. Okay, I guess it's going to be the variation which I've played uh, for the third time now. After knight f3. This variation here, it's a very fun one for sure. G6. Put some pressure on his position with the typical moves bishop g7, knight e4, and bishop g4. At the last game I played, I wasn't very aware of tactics uh, around taking on c5, so I should be very careful with that this game. The last game I could have. Okay, this is one of the playable moves. I think bishop d7 was what you were supposed to play here. Oh wait, never mind, it's bishop g7, and only after knight e5 do you go bishop d7. And then it should be good.
I have read a book on the Karakana and this position is uh, some a position which is definitely not better for white. If it's better for black or not, I don't know, but uh, white is definitely not better here. Even though it seems as if white has more space, perhaps, the pawn on d4 is potentially weak after I begin attacking it with knight e4, bishop g4. I also have the idea of b6 in some positions, breaking apart his pawn chain. e5 in some rare cases as well, so black has a lot of ideas in such positions. Though this is also the problem sometimes, that uh, you get lost because there are too many ideas black can play for. Yeah, bishop d7. This is the move. Um, it's very interesting how the author doesn't mention the logical looking knight takes d7. And only it talks about knight takes c6. Which I think is a bit interesting because knight takes d7 wins the bishop pair, so I think it should be discussed at least. I think yeah, I, I should take with a bishop, but I don't know. Pawn takes d7, doesn't really look so tempting, but then he also has ideas of b4, and then b5 harassing my bishop. But I'll be able to play knight d7 quite quickly, so it shouldn't be a problem. Let's say b4, then I go knight d7. I also have ideas of knight e4. Yeah, we'll castle too. You can pre move taking on c6 if you want. He does have the move bishop e3, but it's definitely not something to be afraid of because it's pretty passive. After b4, I think I'll go knight d7, knight takes d7, queen takes d7. Though maybe bishop takes d7 is also interesting because he can't take on c6. Okay, this move is interesting, but I don't really like it to be honest because now I get f6. Uh, e5 with a tempi. Uh, instinctually, I want to play knight d7. Knight takes c6, pawn takes c6 is okay. Takes Bishop takes d7. Okay, queen takes d7, I have. Okay, nice. If she takes on d7, then I can take with a queen. If I take with a bishop, she would now be able to take on d5, I think. Because I don't have bishop c6 due to knight takes e7 check. I'm starting to like black's position a little. I don't prefer it by a lot yet, but uh, soon I will. Hopefully. The idea f6 e5 is very tempting, uh, getting a strong center, because if he ignores, then I can push e4, play f5, and just go for an attack. Also, I think it's very in my favor that a lot of his pawns are in dark squares, which I've talked about in a previous video. is not a good thing if you have a dark squared bishop, because the pawns control the dark squares as well, but they don't control the light squares, so there are a lot of holes in his position. It's much better to have uh, the pawns on the opposite color of your bishop so that they complement each other because the dark squared bishop controls the dark squares and if pawns are on light squares they control the light squares. F6 is a very tempting move for sure. I don't see the problem, followed by e5. So let's say bishop e3, then I go e5. If he takes, pawn takes, knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, queen takes d5, king h8. 
uh, Rook A D one Knight F six. I don't see how he's uh, getting away. And this is kind of smart. I of course always have. Oh no, I don't have to be a bit careful. Yeah. And this is not too stupid of a move, I have the tempting with rook b8, but I don't know. Because sometimes the bishop could go to g3 with a temp let's say after the move g5. So you need to be a little bit careful. And bishop h4 is of course much better than bishop e3. It's temp I want to get out of the pin, but uh, I don't see a good square for the queen, so it's tempting to play rook e8, then he has the active looking move, rook e6, queen c7, bishop g3, queen b7, queen e1, knight e6, rook e2. It looks okay for me. A bit passive maybe, but it should be good. I also found a very risky but interesting idea. I had to play king f7 followed by knight e5 at some point. Though it becomes very sharp if he lets plays d takes, e king takes, e6, pawn takes, f6. So let's say rook e6, uh, king f7. Okay, l let's pretend the pawn on c6 isn't hanging, because I think I'll start with queen c7 after rook e6. A queen e2 and the knight e5 trapping the rook. So pawn takes e5, king takes e5, pawn takes f6. So I have to be very careful because my king gets a bit active. I wanted to play queen c7 here, is there anything wrong with this move? No. Rook takes c6, knight takes d5. And neither of these moves concern me. Now with queen a4 I guess I'll play rook a c8. If bishop g3 then queen b7. I wanna play knight f8 followed by e5. So even though it looks as if uh, I've weakened a lot of squares with the move f6, it is true, unless I am able to play e5, which I think I am. But my opponent has to be very dynamic if he wants to exploit uh, the weak e6 square, as no pawns uh, defended. Okay, I wanted to play rook a c8 here, let's check tactics. Knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, and bishop g3, queen b7. Knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, c6, queen takes b2, okay, that's good. If queen a6, I have knight f8, bishop g3, and queen d7. Which should be okay for me. I want to continue with my plan of knight f8, is there anything wrong with it? Rook takes c7, rook takes c7, no, the pawn is protected. I don't see the problem, bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, rook takes c6, queen takes c6, I don't see any tactics that work for him. So he should be able to play e5 after his rook moves and then I am better. Maybe you should throw in the moves bishop g3, but okay, he hasn't. Okay, e5, is there any problem? Pawn takes e5, pawn takes e5, bishop g3, knight d7. I 
they can't seem to see a problem do I always have to be look out for moves like knight takes d5 for instance could be a tactical shot at some point Um, yeah, I think if my opponent does nothing, I'll probably advance e4. So we should probably take on d e5. I'll take back. It should be good for me. Uh -huh. I was tempting to play knight d7 in order to defend pawn in e5. I also have the move knight e6, pawn takes c f e5, uh, knight takes c5, but it doesn't look too tempting after, let's say, queen c2. So who knows, to be honest. Also, after knight takes d4, maybe it can calmly move away. Okay, knight e6 is a very interesting move, which I definitely have to check, but there are quite a few things I need to be aware of. For instance, it could simply end up being that uh, knight e6, pawn takes e5, knight takes e5, pawn takes f6 is good. So I think knight d7 is better. Knight takes d5, pawn takes d5 isn't a problem. Yeah, let's do it. Because I think it works for him to take uh, on f6 after knight takes c5. Now I'm able to play queen b7 next move and get out of the annoying pin. You can try queen b3 stopping it, but... I can play rook b8, queen c2, queen b7, for instance. And then play rook b d8 next move. It looks like a bad move, but uh, okay, I have to be a bit careful for sure. It's tempting to play e4, then his idea is f5, of course. I don't think I can take on d4 and f4 because the rook on e8 will be hanging. Okay, queen b7 is another move. Pawn takes e5, pawn takes e5. Pawn takes e5, knight takes c5, queen c2. d4, then knight e4, d3, knight takes c5. Uh, becomes kind of messy to be honest. It's much more tempting to play e4, f5, queen, b7. He'll, pl he'll probably play rook f1. But it should be good for me. The queen b7 is interesting. Undeniably. Let's check it one last time. Queen b7, f takes e5, f takes e5, pawn takes e5, knight takes c5, queen c2, d4, knight e4. That becomes kind of messy. I guess I'll play e4. f5, queen b7. Rook f1. Yeah, I guess I'll go for this position. He can't play knight takes e4 nor knight takes d5, so that's good. Okay, queen b7 was my idea. Rook f1, probably. This is a terrible move by him. Because now he's improved my structure a lot. I want to play f5 and then I'm positionally winning. So this is a very shocking move by him. I had to just simply improve my pawn structure. Now he... All of the pawns... Uh, from the pawn on g6, f6, e4, d5, c6 are all a pawn island. So I have very few pawn islands, which tends to be good in chess. 
I guess we'll play f5, putting pressure on d4. I definitely have the idea of knight f8, knight e6. Yeah, I think knight f8 is a good move to make, because if he takes an f8, rook takes f8, I think this is in my favor as well. Yes, I'll go for my plan. I can pre-move taking with the rook, I guess. In case my opponent... Uh, wow. Okay, I guess I improved the position of my knight. I'm very surprised that he allows this. I think he has to play rook d2 now, but after queen b4, I should be winning. Yes, queen b4. Tempting to take on d4 for sure. I don't see the problem. Rook takes d4, queen takes d4. Should be completely over. I'm now up an exchange and a pawn. Okay, f4 seems to win material. I don't know what he should play, to be honest. This time runs out. Alright guys, let's have a look at the games I played. Yeah, this is the main line so far. And here Dimitri and Magnus Carlsen took on c3. And Dimitri Adrakin took on c3. The game went rook e8. Bishop d4. C5. If knight g4 right away, I think there was something with castles that gave white a very good position, so which is why it's necessary to sacrifice a pawn and then go for knight g4. Uh, castles. And here, a very important detail Magnus Carlsen took on e3. This is an okay move, but the best move is b6. So that after bishop d4, it will become slightly easier to develop the bishop on c8 because it's pretty good on b7. And besides, as uh, happened in Magnus Carlsen's game, takes e3, queen f2, rook e8. Rook e4 is more accurate, but he went rook e8. I don't remember. I think he went queen of six. Uh, Dimitri Andreykin was able to play f5. Uh, this is actually a kind of similar idea to what I played in my game. Uh, the move f5 shuts off the bishop on c8, which is why it would have been good to have b6 in this position, so you could easier, easier come out with bishop b7. But to be honest, I think the best move after b6 is h3. Pawn takes c5, pawn takes g4, bishop takes g4. While the computer says this position is equal, I think it's slightly easier to play white due to the weak pawn on c5. It's an isolated pawn. The pawn on e3 is also a backwards pawn, but I feel as if the weakness on c5 is more significant. Um, four, yes. My opponent played bishop d6, this is an inaccuracy after castles, and bishop g4, uh, I think is wrong, because now I get h3 really quickly, but as we could see in the game, it's very easy to play white, and I think even objectively white has a good position, so white has to be incredible, black has to be incredibly creative to not just get overrun by the pawns on the king side, 
as my opponent did. Uh, c6, very slow move. e4, bishop b4, f5. Here I fought for some time. I didn't know. I fought after e5. Maybe my opponent is okay after bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, knight d5. So I went for f5, trying to trap the bishop on g4, and I couldn't really see how my opponent could stop it. But I think he has to be extremely dynamic with b5. Though, yeah, it doesn't really help either. Okay, when queen d4 in the game, also a dynamic move, but after b bishop b3, it's not so easy to see what my opponent should do in order to save his bishop on g4. So I simply think bishop g4 was a pretty serious mistake, even though it looks natural, developing the bishop with a tempi. Play the slow move a5, I played a3 so that after a4 I can play bishop a2. If I take on a4 with the bishop, yes, bishop takes c3 and is able to win a piece, even though I win a piece back. But I don't want to give a piece for no reason. Knight takes a4 is better, but then bishop takes d2, queen takes d2. Rook takes a4, bishop takes a4, queen takes a4. And this isn't very clear. So obviously I play bishop a2. Bishop a5. And now his bishop just got trapped and he lost very easily. And at the end there was... Some kind of cute tactics, bishop h6. The idea is if he takes, I have queen g7, a uh, queen g2. As if he moves his king, I can take on h6. And after knight g6. Ah. Ah, never mind, yeah, this is, this gets very pretty. Queen takes g6, I thought was a uh, mate. After king h8, rook takes h6. It is, of course, mate after queen g7. But slightly slower with the rook g1. He can throw in a capture on c3, but it doesn't save anything because he can't take on c3 due to the pin. And also this sniping bishop on a2 is very nice, pinning his f-pawn, so he can't take my queen. So he has to take on g6, I'll take with a rook. King h7, rook h takes uh, h6, checkmate, a very beautiful mate. My opponent went for something else, however, and he lost on time after bishop e3, because there's nothing black can really do in this position. I think the best move objectively is to do this, but then you get mated in a couple of moves because you're just down a queen, and your king is terrible as well. I thought this was a pretty good game. Let's have a look at the next game, guys. Went for the solid Karakhan. A pet line of mine, bishop e6. This is very fun to play. Uh, c5, g6. Okay, this is one of the lines white can go for. So far, I think it's the main line. And here, I, for some strange reason, only thought about the move bishop e3 in, instead of bishop h4. I think bishop h4 is better, but this is a very critical position. If black is able, able to push e5, black is better. But if white is able to hold on to the weak square e6, white will be better. But to be honest, I think after knight f8, he should have played bishop g3, queen b7 or something. And now I'm not able to play e5 because the pawn is simply hanging. Though he doesn't have the e6 square either, so I think this position here is roughly equal. But instead he primitively just moved his rook because it was attacked and after e5 I wasn't able to see any tactics with knight deck takes d5 I was always looking to see if this move would work but it never did fortunately I defended a pawn I thought of knight e6 but then I thought if he takes takes he might be able to take on f6 a white is currently a pawn up and I didn't really see what they could do Play f4, this is a, a very anti-positional move. e4, f5, this is logical or else I'm able to play f5 and the game is over pretty much. And here I played queen b7, here he needs to play rook f1. He can't just improve my structure for free. I was very shocked to see this. 
And after rook f1, it's not that clear. Black is much better with uh, some beautiful pawns on the light squares in the center. But it's much better than to take on g6. This, I think, is lost. Because the pawn on d4 is incredibly weak. Black has some really nice pa pawns. Play knight e6, I guess queen b4 is also possible. Then maybe he can... Yeah, it's also possible. Maybe it's even better. I don't know. Knight e6, threatening the pawn on d4. And after queen d4, I think it's all over, because the pawn d4 falls, and that's where white's position collapses. Obviously, bishop e5 doesn't really change much. I can think about playing d4 with the idea of d3, or maybe I could take on c5 right away. Alright, let's have a look at what the computer says about these two games. Right, getting ready to search the computer. There we go. Go to the analysis board. It'll be interesting to see if the computer is able to find anything for white in that critical position after rook e6. If white had any way to preserve uh, the e6 square. Because if white doesn't do this, uh, black has good chances. And he should have at least played bishop g3 so I don't get to play e5 so easily. Usually on a higher depth, and in the opening the computer said white is better, but on a higher depth the computer realizes that white has nothing. I had queen c8, ah, that's very smart. I didn't think of it. According to, uh, to the computer, this game wasn't really that smooth. Okay, let's have a look. So, okay, the computer agrees that white isn't able to preserve the squares. And here the computer points out a very good idea, queen c8, which I could have seen. The idea is that uh, the queen puts indirect pressure on the rook on e6. So, for instance, after queen a4, I would have the move knight takes c5. So queen c8 is smart, I guess. It's forced maybe to play something like this, but... Then black is clearly much better here. So I can agree, queen c7 wasn't a very good move. Queen a4. Wow, even two exclamation marks, that's nice. It's kind of interesting how the computer says that I'll be able to play e5 anyways. Let's check the variations. Ah, maybe I am, yeah? Because of capture, 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 takes, 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 takes. I'm able to take on b2, uh-huh. Yeah, uh, white has some hanging pieces. This is clearly better for black. I guess, in fact, bishop g3 wouldn't have helped white at all. Yeah, I was thinking about knight e6. Ah, it points out the move f5. This is very smart, I didn't think of it. I guess after f4, the idea is that after knight takes c5, I'm able to occupy the e4 square and to get a significant advantage. And the, the idea of f5 is very smart, I'll have to remember it for sure, that is beautiful. f4, e4, yeah, logical move. Peter says I could have played a5, what? Oh, maybe I could have. Or after rook f1, the computer lights white? That's strange, because I think positionally black is better. 
Of course, the bishop on g7 is a little bit blocked by the pawn on f6, but uh, I thought the central pawns, d5, e4, would be very important. Okay, taking on g6 is a terrible decision. Maybe knight f8 is possible instead. Wow, the computer talks about this move and... What's the idea? Uh, just getting a lot of uh, pawns for the piece. Okay, it's clear that black is better here. If I, yeah, I'm, I didn't really think of g6. I thought I would take. I, I thought very briefly of something like h3, g4, trying to break apart my structure. But I thought I would always take on g4. And that I didn't really believe in it. Knight f8 with the idea of knight e6. Yeah, I think both queen before a knight e6 win. Ah, oh, yeah, he had knight e2. Well, okay, but after he didn't play it, I'm completely winning. Let's write down the mistakes I made, guys. Let's see. Now I've played 12 games for the teams. Uh, in the opening, did I mess up anything due to knowledge? I felt as if I knew the openings that I played quite well, actually. So I don't think uh, I made any mistakes like this. What about creativity? I guess I missed queen c8, which was in the opening, so give myself one mistake there. I can't really say I was too materialistic in either of the games, though I did maybe focus too much on the fact that I would win material, but I didn't see any compensation, so I don't see it as a mistake. Yeah, I thought I was quite clever with finding plans, uh, the plan of f5 and trapping the bishop. In the first game, in the second game, the plan of e5 was well executed. So I can't say I missed... Okay, what about the opponent ideas? Oh wait, I should have a look at the, my first game too with the computer. Ah oh, nice, we won with a pretty convincing score, that's good. Yeah, I'm going to check out the other game with the computer in case I missed something because you never know so it's always possible to miss something so it's good to analyze a little yourself and then check with a computer but it's important to analyze at least a little bit by yourself before you check with a computer so that you also learn the skill to analyze Oh, this game seems pretty smooth. I guess. The computer doesn't seem to give me too many mistakes. Yeah, this variation with queen a4 is very interesting. I recommend you guys check it out. I think my opponent is lost here. Because it's just a piece down and his king is also very open as well. But why was bishop takes h6 inaccurate? Is there any reason? D8 was maybe smart. You can move the rook though. Ah, okay. Is he able to play bishop f6 or something? What's, what's the idea? Ah, bishop g5, wow. Okay, yeah, this is winning, yeah. But yeah, bishop d8, I didn't actually see that, so I guess that could be counted as a miss. What other things did I miss? Uh, 
If I missed something in the second game, let's see what was it again that I missed. I missed the idea of G4, so I guess uh, two mistakes here. So now it's 11 mistakes. My confidence was pretty decent. I didn't really underestimate my opponent either. I just played chess because it's quite fun. I was pretty concentrated. I didn't let the emotions take the better of me this game. My time management wasn't too bad in the middle game. It was okay, I guess. Actually, I think it was pretty good because I stayed up on the clock a lot. But it's not like I was playing too fast either and missed a lot of things. Uh, I didn't really reach end game, so no answer, I guess. Yeah, I didn't really have moments when I spent too much time at a time. Alright, everyone, thank you for watching this video.